Hello and welcome back to the course on physics for engineers. This is now the last lesson for chapter 11 which is on electrostatics. So before we proceed let us first review some concepts. So in the previous lessons we have in the previous lesson we have discussed about the electric potential uh, which is just potential energy per unit charge. And the Coulomb's law for electric potential is just KQ over R. Uh, we also discuss about voltage or potential difference. It's just the potential uh, at, of one point, say at point A, with respect to another point, say point B. And it's just given by this, their difference, VA minus B. So in this uh, last lesson, we will be talking about uh, capacitors with dielectrics. So capa a capacitor is a device that stores electric potential energy and consequently uh, it will store charge. So it is made from two oppositely charged conductors insulated from each other. So you have a positive uh, conduct, uh, uh, conductor, say conductor A with positive charge Q, uh, conductor B with negative charge Q, and this will be the direction of their electric field. So it looks like a dipole. So the, the energy, the electric potential energy is actually stored within the electric field. So a capacitor ideally charges and discharges very quickly. So the measure of how, how much a capacitor charges and discharges very quickly is given by its capacitance. So this is the ability of a capacitor uh, to store energy, electric potential energy and charge. So it's given by the charge stored on the capacitor over the potential difference of the capacitor. Capacitor. So take note, uh, one uh, point in the capacitor or the upper conductor in the capacitor has a positive potential and the lower uh, conductor has a negative potential. So this will have a potential difference. So the standard unit of uh, capacitance is the unit called farad. And as you can see, uh, one farad is one coulomb per volt. <clears throat> so the circuit symbol for capacitance is this one. You have two parallel lines. So that means that the, the, the value of the potential for the positive and the negative uh, terminals are actually or has the same uh, magnitude or value. So there are different types of capacitors. You have ceramic types, film types, electrolytic types, and usually these electrolytic types are called supercapacitors. So the most commonly available capacitors is in cylindrical shape. You may have encountered this one. So usually commercially available capa capacitors uh, have uh, capacitances in the range of microfarads. So if you have one farad, that's actually a very large capacitance. So these are just the different types of capaci capacitors. So from the equation for capacitance, we can actually solve for the charge. So charge is just capacitance times voltage. And the stored energy in a capacitor is given by 1 half CV squared, or it can also use Q squared over 2C, or 1 half charge times voltage. So there are many applications for a capacitor so if you have a camera flash so camera flashes flashes uses a capacitor so a capacitor ideally charges and discharges very quickly meaning it will give energy for a burst or for, for a brief moment of time so imagine if you don't use a capacitor in your camera flash then your camera flash will just light without uh, turning off immediately. So it's like a flashlight if you, if you don't use a capacitor. So another application of capacitor is in condenser uh, microphones. So they use capacitor plates uh, inside. 
and the touch screen technology so the touch in the touch screen technology uh, together with your hand it, it acts as your hand actually acts as a capacitor in that case and uh, that the point where you you make the touch is actually uh, or actually changes the capacitance with the point uh, where you touch the surface will actually change because your capacitor your hand will act will also act as a capacitor and they will have a connection so in the last part of this lesson we will be discussing about the different types of capacitor connections and what are the effects if you connect two capacitors in different manners so what is now the difference between capacitors and batteries so a capacitor stores electric potential energy while a battery stores chemical potential energy uh, they usually have the same conductors at the positive and negative terminals but for a battery it should be different uh, a capacitor uses a dielectric which is another term for an insulator an electrical insulator as a separator uh, but uh, a battery uses an electrolyte so ideally a capacitor charges and discharges very quickly but ideally a battery must not discharge or charge very quickly so it should charge and discharge very slowly so applications for capacitor include camera flash tv remotes uh, the touch screen so for a battery its application is mostly to power electro electronic devices including powering a or charging a capacitor so the simplest form of a capacitor is the parallel plate capacitor so this is the basic and the simplest cap uh, capacitor design so you just have two flat sheets of conductor two conducting flat sheets one has an area uh, both have same area a uh, one is positively charged the other one is negatively charged so they have a potential difference or voltage VAB and basically there's nothing in between so it's capacitor with nothing or vacuum in between so this is not this is actually just a theoretical capacitor you cannot make a, a capacitor with nothing just air in between because uh that will actually make if there's nothing in between the positive and the negative sheet or the conduct conducting sheet then there these two conductors will most likely touch each other and in that case the capacitor will short will be a short circuit so the positive q and negative q then it will cancel each, they will cancel each other out and they will be neutral so no capacitor in that case so the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor only depends on the area of its plates and the distance between its plates and epsilon naught is just a constant so if you will notice uh by the way we have introduced epsilon naught before but now we introduce it with a different unit but it's actually just an equivalent unit so farad per meter so the capacitance actually just depends on the design or the shape of your capacitors but there are different shapes of capacitors you have spherical you have cylindrical capacitors and the capacitance actually doesn't the capacitor doesn't doesn't necessarily need to be charged to be connected or to have a potential difference in order for you to calculate the capacitance because it only depends on the shape or the design of the capacitor so a dielectric is basically an insulator so in this case you have a capacitor and your capacitor is made of two metal foils such as aluminum foils and separated by plastic sheets so dielectrics are insulators they do not insulators do not allow our opposite of conductors conductors allow the for the flow of current uh insulators doesn't allow the flow of sorry allow the flow of charges insulators don't so uh conductors are mostly metals insulators are mostly glass plastic our body are basically insulators but we also have some conductivity or some uh, we are also a conductor to some degree so actually all materials uh, are conductors and insulators but uh, when you say insulators they are mostly uh, 
They, they are more insulator than conductor. So the main purpose of, an, of, an, of a dielectric or an insulator is to ensure that the two plates of your capacitor do not touch each other. Because again, if the positive plate and the negative plate of your capacitor touch each other, then you will have you will no longer have a capacitor. You can have a short circuit. So the second reason is to increase the capacitance of the capacitor in a given dimension. So a dielectric or an insulator has what we call a dielectric constant, K, okay, which is just the ratio of the capacitor with and without dielectric. So if you will notice here, uh, the capacitance, if you cross multiply, is just K times the original capacitance. This is the capacitance without dielectric. So the dielectric constant serves as a multiplying factor, multiplication factor for the capacitance. So depending on what the value of the dielectric constant is, then that is the, the, the multiplication factor if you insert the dielectric in your capacitor. And its value is always greater than 1 because if K is equal to 1, that only means that uh, C is equal to C0, so meaning you have no dielectric inserted between your uh, plates of the capacitor. So it's in vacuum, capacitor in vacuum. So these are just some dielectric constants at 20 degrees Celsius. Take note again, uh, C is just equal to K times C0. C0 is the original capacitance without the dielectric. So K, the dielectric constants serve as a multiplication factor. So for, exa for example, if you, if you place uh, PVC, polyvinyl chloride, between the plates of your capacitor, since its dielectric constant is 3.18, meaning the capacitance will increase by 3.18 times. It's a multiplication factor. Now, uh, if you have strontium titanate, this I guess this is uh, a common dielectric for capacitors, commercial capacitors. It's 310. Uh, its dielectric constant is 310. So it's just a number. Take out the dielectric constant. It's just it's just a number. So meaning, if you insert uh, this uh, material in your capacitor, then its capacitance will increase by 310 volts or 310 times. Now, if you will notice water, water also has a, has, has a high dielectric constant. It's 80.4. But the problem with water is it's liquid. How will you, how will you seal that in your capacitor? So usually, uh, commercial capacitors doesn't use liquid. But supercapacitors actually use liquid. So there is a phenomenon called dielectric breakdown. Uh, this is what happens to an insulator or a dielectric uh, when uh, it can no longer handle the very strong electric field in your capacitor. And in that case, it becomes partly a conductor. So this happens when the dielectric is subjected to very strong uh, magnetic fields or very, very high voltages. So high voltage means strong magnetic field. So an example of this is lightning. So air is, an, is a dielectric and air has a dielectric strength of 3 times 10 to the 6 Newton per Coulomb or another unit for uh, electric field in terms of voltage is volt per meter. So lightning is, an, is, a, is a very perfect manifestation of the electric breakdown. So the air from being an insulator or a, a dielectric it becomes a conductor and charges in the atmosphere can now flow. There's now a conducting path from the atmosphere to the ground. Okay, so the last lesson or the last topic for this lesson is actually capacitor connections. And there are two basic uh, connections for capacitors. One, the first one is the series connection. The series connection happens when you connect the lower plate or say the negative plate of one capacitor to the upper plate of one capacitor. Or not necessarily the upper or lower, depending on your if you if you know this, if you uh, rotate this one, then the important thing is in series connection, only one plate 
of the first capacitor is connected to the second to the second plate to another to the plate of an another capacitor but the other plates of the two capacitors are not connected so that is the series connection so you can imagine uh, two persons you can imagine two persons and they're holding hands like this so that is a series connection one hand of person a is connected to the other hand of person b but their other hands are not connected so that is the series uh, connection okay if you have a series connection uh you can actually combine these two capacitors and there will be an equivalent capacitors so the equivalent capacitance will be for a series connection is given by this uh, equation so it's one over c1 the capacitance of capacitor one plus one over c2 plus depending on how many capacitors are there in series and then you take the inverse to the power of negative one so you add their inverses you sum all of their inverses and then you inverse you raise to the power of negative one so a the, the equivalent capacitance of capacitors capacitors in series is always less than the individual capacitor so this is the purpose of connecting capacitors in series so for instance you have two large capacitors and you need a smaller uh, capacitor so in order to have a smaller capacitance then you connect the two in series so that you, they, you will it will result in, in a smaller uh, equivalent capacitance so the voltages in capacitor in series are just uh, added so the total voltage of the circuit is just the voltage of capacitor one plus voltage of capacitor two so the voltage is actually divided among the capacitors so if the capacitor the voltage of this circuit is three volts so it can be one volt goes to capacitor one and two volts goes to capacitor two so the voltage so a series connection is a voltage divider but if you have a series connection the magnitude of the charge on the plates in capacitor one and capacitor two and capacitor three depending how many capacitors are connected in series they are all the same they are all equal to the uh, charge of the total uh, capacitor the equivalent capacitor so the second connection is the capa parallel connection so if you have a parallel connection you connect both of the plates both of the upper plates of the two capacitors and both of their lower plates or both of their second plates so you both connect uh, both of their upper or first plates and their second plates of the capacitor so you can imagine from our from my analogy late earlier i i i used two persons no so you can imagine for a parallel connection you can imagine two persons but in this instant they both of their right hands and both of their left hands are now touching each other so that is a parallel connection and you can have a parallel connection for more than two capacitors so capacitors in parallel can be converted into an equivalent capacitor and the equivalent capacitance is just the sum of all their capacitances so consequently the equivalent capacitance of capacitors connected in parallel results in a larger capacitor so for example you have you only have uh, capacitors which have very small uh, capacitance values and you want a large capacitance uh, value so you need to connect them in parallel in order to have a uh, larger capacitance value so that's the application for uh, main purpose for connecting in parallel so parallel connections have the same voltages but the charge is actually divided among the capacitors connected in parallel so a parallel connection is always a charge divider a series connection is a voltage divider okay so let's now have an, exam have an example for these uh, lessons okay uh, example number one charge and energy of a capacitor so a one nanofarad capacitor is charged by connecting it to a three volts battery so actually 
That's how you charge a capacitor. You connect it to a source of uh, energy. In this case, our source of uh, voltage is a battery with a voltage of 3 volts. What is the charge of the capacitor before and after charging and how much energy is stored in the capacitor after charging? So for letter A, the charge is just the capacitance times the voltage. So before you charge it, since you, you didn't connect it first, you didn't connect it to the battery, the voltage is zero. So before you charge it, of course, the charge is zero. Now after you connect it to the to the battery, then you just multiply the capacitance times the voltage. And you will get a value of so capacitance times the voltage. So nanofarad means nano means 10 to the negative 9. And you will get a value of 3 times 10 to the negative 9 coulomb or 3 nano coulomb. So that is now the charge after charging. So after charging, charge after charging. Okay, letter B. How much energy is stored in the capacitor after charging? Of course, before you charge it, there is no energy stored in the capacitor. But after you charge it, uh, we can use this formula, 1 half CB squared. Because the capacitance and voltage are both given. And of course, the final unit is joules. So you will have a value of 4.5 times 10 to the negative 9 or 4.5 nano joules. Okay, example number two. <clears throat> so a capacitor with and without a dielectric. So this is a parallel plate capacitor. So suppose the plates of a parallel parallel plate capacitor have an area of 100 millimeter squared and are 5 millimeters apart. So area A is 100 millimeter squared. You need to convert that into meter squared. And the distance D between the plates of the capacitor is 5 millimeters. So you, can, you, need, you also need to convert that into meters. So the, the capacitor is connected to a 1.50 volts na source, so meaning the potential difference is 1.50 volts and it's, this is, and it's then disconnected from the power supply. So after charging, after connect, connecting it to a battery, for instance a 1.5 volts battery, when the capacitor is already full charged, and take note, a capacitor charges and discharges very quickly. So charging a capacitor is actually very instant. It's just very instant. So you disconnect the capacitor from the battery and the capacitor now has its own potential difference. It's now has its own voltage. So it's now storing energy, it's now storing charge. So a sheet of dielectric material with dielectric constant of 5.0 is then inserted between its plates and the potential difference decreases while the charge remains constant. So when you insert a dielectric uh, in the plates of your capacitor, the charge will actually remain constant, it will remain the same, but the potential difference and the potential energy will actually decrease. So letter A, compute the original capacitance. So let's first start with letter A, compute the original capacitance. So the original capacitance, Without the dielectric for a parallel plate capacitor is just epsilon naught A over D. So epsilon naught is 8.854 times 10 to the negative 12 farad per meter. The area is 100 millimeter squared. So if you convert that into meter squared, you need to multiply by 10 to the negative 6. Uh, the distance is 5 millimeters. If you convert that into meters, you need to multiply it by 10 to the negative 3. Milli means 10 to the negative 3. And the final unit is farads. And you will get a value of uh, 1.77 times 10 to the negative 13 farad. So this is the original capacitance. Okay. Letter B. The magnitude of charge on each plane. Q. So Q is just the capacitance times the uh, original voltage. And actually, it doesn't change. It's actually equal to the final capacitance and final voltage. 
So the original capacitance we are given with this 1.77 times 10 to the negative 13 farads. Initial voltage is 1.5 volts. The final unit is coulombs. We will get a value of uh, 2.65 times 10 to the negative 13 uh, coulombs. So that is the charge on each plate of the capacitor. The upper plate of the capacitor is positive 2.65 times 10 to the negative 13 coulomb. The lower plate of the capacitor is negative 2.65 times 10 to the negative 13 coulomb. Okay, let us see. Uh, the capacitance after the dielectric is inserted. So, of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the dielectric constant is just a multiplication factor. So, if k is equal to 5, you have 5 c now, 5 times the original capacitor. And this will give you a value of 8.85 times 10 to the negative 13 farads. So this is 5 times 1.77 times 10 to the negative 13 uh, farads. Okay, letter D. The potential difference after the dielectric is inserted. Okay, so for letter D, since we know <clears throat> that the original capacitance is just Q over V naught, or uh, since we know that the charge remains constant after you insert the dielectric, so Q is just equal to C naught, V naught, and it's also equal to C times V. So from this, we solve for V. So V is just equal to uh, C naught, V naught over C. Where C naught over C is just 1 over K. So this is just V naught over K. So you will notice that the capacitance increases by an amount of K, but the voltage is divided by uh, K, 1 over K. So you have V naught is 1.5 divided by 5, and you will get uh, V is 0 0.3 volts. 1.5 divided by 5. You will have 0 0.3 volts. And lastly, the energy stored before and after the dielectric is inserted. So, for letter E, uh, U naught is just one half C naught V naught squared, the original capacitance and the original voltage squared. And this will give you a value of 2 times 10 to the negative 13 joules. And for the final energy, it's one half final capacitance, final voltage squared, and you will get a value of 0 0.4 times 10 to the negative 13 joules. So, this is actually the original stored energy divided by k divided by 5 so this is 2 divided by 5 you get 0 0.4 times 10 to the 13 joules so the voltage is divided by k the potential energy is divided by k but the capacitance is multiplied by k when you insert a dielectric okay so these are the summary of our results Okay, uh, last example. So this is regarding capacitor uh, connections. So find the equivalent capacitance of the network of capacitors. So in this case, we have five capacitors. C1, 12 uh, microfarads. C2, 6 microfarads. C3, 11 microfarads. C4, 3 microfarads. C5, 9 microfarads. So... We need to convert this into just one equivalent capacitor. So the technique in doing this is to identify the basic capacitor connections. So in this case, we can immediately see that C1 and C2 are in series connection, meaning we can actually uh, replace C1 by and C2 by an, by an equivalent capacitor, say C1, so, what we will do is re uh, replace C1 and C2 by an equivalent capacitor C12. And how do we get uh, the capacitance of that equivalent capacitor C12? So, we use the series uh, formula. So, in this case, uh, C12 is just equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2, then inverse. So, you will get uh, 1 over C1 is 12 microfarad plus 1 over C2 
सॉरी सी टू एस सिक्स माइक्रो पारद देन टेक द इनवर्स ऑफ दैट सो वन ट्वेल्व प्लस वन सिक्स इज वन सो कॉमन डिनोमिनेटर इज ट्वेल्व सो वन सिक्स इज एक्चुअली टू ओवर ट्वेल्व सो यू गेट वन ट्वेल्व प्लस टू ओवर ट्वेल्व सो यू गेट थ्री ओवर ट्वेल्व एंड यू टेक सो दिस इज बेसिकली थ्री ओवर ट्वेल्व माइक्रो पारद यू टेक द इनवर्स सो यू इनवर्ट इट दिस इज द पार नेगेटिव वन दैट इज ट्वेल्व माइक्रो पारद ओवर थ्री सो ट्वेल्व डिवाइडेड बाई थ्री दैट इज एक्चुअली फोर माइक्रो पारद सो दिस इज सी वन टू इज फोर माइक्रो पारद सो दैट्स वन सी वन टू इज फोर माइक्रो पारद नाउ देन यू हैव सिंप्लीफाइड दिस वन नाउ you look for another basic uh, connection so here we see that c1 to c3 and c4 are all in parallel connection because you connect their upper plates all of their upper plates and you connect all of their row lower plates so meaning i can actually replace uh, this c1 to c3 and c4 by just one capacitor i will call that c1 to 3 4 okay So how do I do that? <clears throat> so since it's a capacitor, it's a it's a parallel connection. Then I just the equivalent capacitor called C one two three four will just be the addition of C one two plus C three plus C four. So C one two is already four microfarads. C three is eleven microfarads. C four is three microfarads. And you will get C one two three four as eighteen micro parad. So C one two three four is eighteen micro parad. So this one. Okay. Now finally, we are now down to two capacitors in series, and we can now combine this and get the equivalent capacitance of this whole network here. So this whole network here is just equivalent to this uh, final. Uh, capacitor final equivalent capacitor. So instead of uh, naming your final equivalent capacitor as C one two three four five, then we just use C equivalence. So for that last part, for the for the last part, since it's just two capacitors connected in series, then we use the series formula. So you have C one two three four. So the equivalent capacitance will now be. One over C one two three four plus one over C five, since it's series, and take the inverse. So you get one over eighteen microfarad plus one over C five is nine, nine microfarad. So one over eighteen plus one over nine, one over nine is actually two over eighteen. So you have three over eighteen. Take the inverse of that, eighteen over three, and eighteen divided by three is six. You will get six. Microfarad as the final equivalent capacitance. So the whole network of capacitors here, five capacitors, is just equivalent to one single capacitor with a capacitance of six microfarads. So that's it for the series of parallel connections of uh, capacitors. So that is the end of this lesson, and consequently the end of this chapter. So, in the next uh, lessons, it will now be uh, another instructor who will be giving the lessons. So, this is now goodbye. So, I hope to see you again in maybe in other in your other physics uh, subjects. So, goodbye.